everybody. Andy Roman here. Welcome to this episode of Get Real with Andy. The title of this one is Living on the Edge. And I'm not talking about extreme sports or bungee jumping or, you know, doing dangerous things. I'm talking about living consciously. And the reason I'm calling that the edge is because our brains, I mentioned this in a prior episode, our brains are wired to really do as little as possible to orient ourselves. So once we create a map, once we have a bunch of experiences, we will rely more on the map rather than actually perceiving the subtle messages or the nuances of the current reality. I mentioned this before, but when we're in a familiar environment, as few as 20% of our rods and cones in our eyeball fire because we rely so much on our conceptualization of what is there than on what actually is perceived. When we're in a place unfamiliar to us, close to 100%, if not 100% of those rods and cones are firing because we need to see in order to navigate and to perceive. We need to go with what we perceive because it's new to us. That's why with children, when everything is new to them, they're really present. We say, well, I want to be like that kid. And as you might see, I'm in a warehouse. I'm in an empty warehouse. And I'm using that as a symbol to say, you know, there's got to be room for the new. The new is always with us because everything really is brand new. Or let's say the atoms that were there this morning are simply not the same ones. Everything is in flux. So, you know, last episode was all about play and how play is our nature because everything is new to us. So what happened to us? How did we lose touch with that ongoing newness? You know, people get bored. You know, it doesn't take an old person to be bored. Children get bored because they fall into the rut of their own conceptual and their own map maker and their own routines and expectations. We, we succumb to that stuff really early on. And a lot of people will seek out novelty. That's why we travel and we want to go to places that are new to us because we want to be stimulated. Things seem more present when we're actually perceiving what is. And we get to the point where we need to be stimulated with strangeness and the unknown in order to have that experience. I am saying that the newness is always there as a quality. And it takes some inner work to be conscious enough to actually perceive the new and familiar surroundings. That's the task. That's the, the mission. And I know I'm happier when I'm experiencing something brand new, you know? And I've quoted this before, but some famous person said, experience this moment as if this magic has never happened before. Today, in the healing circle, I was asking the whole group way, what is the benefits of, of actually opening up and tuning into feelings and sharing what's really deep in our hearts and minds? What's the benefit? And... People said wonderful things that I've heard before, but today somebody said something new. They actually said, sometimes we need to be caught off guard. We need to be assaulted with challenging love. What a cool phrase. In order to snap out of our old ways of thinking, our old ways of seeing things and ruts that we fall into. It takes an assault of love. You know, I probably won't write that in my brochure about the healing circle. Maybe I will. It's actually, it's bold. It's a bold statement. I am recognize and I do acknowledge that a lot of the novelty and the effectiveness of therapy in the healing circle is because it's unexpected. I, ha I have a tendency and maybe a gift to pick things out from left field and bring them in to center attention in a way that jars a person, jolts a person, and stimulates actual perception. You know, I was working with somebody who was 
doing some, you know, early childhood memory type work. And they made contact with this kid part of themselves. And they were telling things like, you aren't abandoned. You don't feel so bad. You know, everybody is going to be okay. And they've been doing inner work and therapy for years. And I said, well, how's all that working for you? And it turns out they said, no, I'm working, you know, it's moving slow. And I said, you know, part of the reason your approach isn't working is because you're lying to a kid to say you are not abandoned when their parent left them when they were three or something. You know, you can't say stuff like that. That's, you don't establish a, a credibility or a rapport with that kid part of yourself. You gotta be honest. You know, more honest is it really sucks and I know it really hurts that your dad left. I know you really miss him. You know, that's the stuff where you make room for the feelings. You know, uh, put pressure on the kid to grow up and understand conceptually that everything is fine and everything is where it's supposed to be. Oh, God, that turns my stomach. Not because it's not true, but because it's just so not helpful when dealing with like inner dynamics a lot of times it's just not helpful it's so platitudinal you know that's what you say to somebody when you cheer them up without any substance so anyway i'm saying get to the new get to the to the moment this absolute brand new fresh moment the breath is the key to the brand new moment because this breath unlike the one before and the one after this is the one I'm receiving right now. Where does it come from when I breathe it in? And where does it go when I breathe it out? It's like this wonderful mystery. And I know the more that I locate myself in that mysterious place, that frontier of consciousness, the more I actually dwell there and practice withdrawing my senses into that space. Then when I come out and engage my senses, I'm going to naturally have a much more playful engagement with the world, and I'm going to have a much more um, vital engagement with my senses and with reality. I do get to be like a child again. I get to have that brand newness. You know, to have the heart of a child, well, that may take some that may take some humility work. That may take some actually being humiliated that may take some confrontation and that part of the work is not necessarily pleasant but it is just as vital as revitalizing our relationship with our own senses so the good news is it's available if i i need to submit myself to the process ask for the help and open myself for the help that I actually need. This isn't a matter of, I can do this on my own. I need help. It's built into the system to need some kind of help. And help means something beyond my own perceptions. And it does, sorry, an assault of love that really makes all the difference. So listen, I hope this has been helpful for you to some kind of a understanding or inspiration to really get to the cutting edge of go beyond what you know what you know is yesterday's breakfast you know you can only live on yesterday's breakfast for so long until it's you know it's supposed to pass through the same way with our concepts that's why the truth is a living and a vital reality and a vital thing that needs to be encountered brand new every single day and if I really play it every single moment, I get to have that encounter. So lovely, so lucky. And it takes effort. I get lazy. Ah, uh, just let me, I've had a hard day at work. Let me just veg out. And I say, I've said this before, you know, eat vegetables, don't be one. Actually withdrawing from the senses and being very still and retreating into the breath cave, that's not being a vegetable. That's actually retreating into the source point. Okay, thank you.